The mainstream news media has been following the work of the Trump transition team closely and reacting to each new appointment with a serious, subjective, high-pitched shriek of panic while lying on the floor in a puddle of their own urine and tears, kicking their feet and sobbing loudly. As NBC commentator Melanie Hysteria put it, quote, I can't even, death everywhere, mommy, mommy, someone save us, end of the world, oh my God, unquote. Some of you may be wondering, where are these journalists getting their inside information on Trump's selections? Well, I'm here to answer your question. Actually, I'm here because my clothes are in the laundromat next door, but while I'm here, I'll answer your question. The mainstream media actually share an information sheet entitled A Democrat's Guide to the Trump Appointments. Written by Nancy Pelosi's assistant, Igor the Humpback, the Democrats' Guide gives a handy thumbnail sketch of each appointment so that journalists can report this information instead of telling the truth. Here are some selections from the list. Ben Carson, Housing and Urban Development. Carson masquerades as a black man, but worked his way out of poverty to become a brain surgeon, so does not have the true sense of victimhood needed to qualify as a Democrat-certified member of the Negro race. What's more, Carson belongs to a bizarre cannibalistic religious cult in which worshippers eat the blood and flesh of a god who was crucified but came back to life. We expect this surgeon to cut away the subsidized housing that keeps our wonderful Democrat Negroes dependent on us for handouts. For the sake of mankind, he must be stopped. Stephen Bannon, chief strategist. Bannon is a hideous winged creature who resembles a cross between a gigantic bat and a punch in the mouth. He dwells in unholy darkness beneath the pavements of Los Angeles, emerging by night to drink the blood of Jews. Now, of course, some Democrats might think this could be useful in reducing American support for the apartheid state of Israel. Unfortunately, Bannon's anti-Semitism isn't good left-wing anti-Semitism that merely seeks to destroy the Jewish homeland. Bannon practices evil right-wing anti-Semitism that manifests itself by giving support to Israel and hiring and befriending Jews. Tom Price, Health Secretary. Price lives alone in a Gothic mansion where he wanders muttering through his extensive collection of the heads of gay people suspended in formaldehyde. He expresses his twisted evil by being anti-choice, especially if the choice you make is to kill a baby. Price has vowed to repeal Obamacare and hunt down every lawmaker who voted for it so that they'll one day wake up to find him standing over their bed, illuminated by a flash of lightning and holding an axe. The Democrat informational guide goes on, but I think this selection explains the mainstream media's transition reporting. In the words of CNN anchorman Wolf Mendacity, quote, if this is... I don't know. Somebody kill me. I think my head's on fire. Everywhere is hell. Kill me now, please. This is CNN, the most trusted name in news. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky, life is tickety-boo. Birds are winging, also singing, hunky dunky doo Ship-shaped, ipsy-topsy, the world is a bitty zing It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray, it makes me want to sing Oh, hurrah, hooray Oh, hooray, hurrah and speaking of tickety-boo, if you are driving home and you get a tickety, you will be saying boo-hoo, especially because one of the things we hate about this is that a lot of these tickets, you know, nobody wants you to drive unsafely. We don't want you to drive too fast. But a lot of these uh, speed traps are just set up to increase the money you pay to the state. So you're, you know, you're driving perfectly safely and the cop is just waiting for you to cross that line. So... Our sponsor, Rocky Mountain Radar, has the fix. They are offering 50% off their products if, if, and only if, you go to RockyMountainRadar.com slash Andrew. You have to put in that slash Andrew to get the 50% off. These are exclusively the only radar devices that include both radar and laser scrambling technology. Okay, so you not only can tell where the comp is, you can scramble his radar for a while, so you have time to slow down before he gives you the ticket. Now, this thing was developed by a guy named Mike. I talked to him for a long time on the phone. He used to work in the defense industry, and his job was making devices that made guided missiles miss their target. So you would shoot at the fighter jet as it was going by. Mike was there building these little boxes that would make the missile go like, 
I don't know where I'm going, right? So Mike figured, hey, if I can do this, if I can keep a fighter jet from being blown out of the sky, I can keep these radar guns from getting a good reading on you before you have a chance to slow down. So he started to invent this, these boxes, these amazing boxes that include both radar and laser scrambling technology. Now, the guys back this. Not only will they give you 50% off if you go to the uh, RockyMountainRadar.com slash Andrew, not only will they give you that, but when you register your device, they back these things so much that you will qualify for their ticket rebate program. If you get a ticket within the first year of owning your Scrambler, Rocky Mountain Radar will pay the price of your ticket. Some exceptions exceptions apply. If you're traveling 150 miles an hour, the cop doesn't need the radar. He can see that you're speeding. And don't do that, okay? <laughs> because that's not smart. But but you can find all the details at RockyMountainRadar.com slash Andrew and get 50% off the best scramblers and detec detectors available. You also, it, it comes with like a three-year warranty too, so it's like pretty well backed up. So go to RockyMountainRadar.com slash Andrew, 50% off top of the line equipment. This is stealth technology for your car, all right? You can even put wings on your car. It makes it all the more fashionable. All right, we're going to have John Nolte, the Noltonator, is going to come on in a little while. That's after we lose you from Facebook and YouTube. But you can come over to thedailywire.com and see that. We're going to talk to him about the media. You know, the, this, the Trump transition has now fallen into a recognizable pattern. This is every day this, this happens. Step one, Trump makes good appointments. He really makes good. He's really been making good appointments, and the appointments signal that he meant what he said pretty much when he was on the campaign trail. So yesterday, he appointed Oklahoma Attorney General Scott, Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt, to head the EPA. And Pruitt is a guy who was part of a lawsuit to shut down some of the EPA's lawless regulations that it has been spreading through the the uh, length of the Obama administration. This stuff, you know, a lot of you guys, if you don't run a business, you don't know about this, but the EPA has tried to seize the right to define what a waterway is because the EPA has regulatory rights over waterways. So, like, basically they say, well, if you fill up your sink to shave, that is a waterway, and now we can tell you what to do. And they've been trying all this stuff and trying to, they have this clean power plan that's been shutting down coal, making it too expensive for coal. A lot of these plans have been held up by judges. The judge is saying, hey, you, know, you can't just decide that you can regulate every puddle in America, you know, and they've been holding it up. But this guy, Scott Pruitt, good choice because he is a client. He knows that this climate change thing is a hoax. It's not that the climate's not changing. It's that this array of left wing wish list policies is not going to have any effect on it. So he is a great guy. I mean, if it, were, if it were my choice, I would appoint, like, a Muslim terrorist to head the EPA. I would appoint one of these guys who blows up buildings, like Mohammed Hichu. I would say, like, yes, I go in and blow up everything. I kill the EPA. That would be my choice. But this guy is pretty good, too. So that's step one. He's been making good appointments. Step two, the left goes nuts. And when we say the left, of course, we also mean most of our news sources who just start reporting, oh, my God, the EPA, we're all going to die from climate change. That's that happened yesterday, too. I <laughs> saw so one tweet, like, this may be, I don't want to, at the risk of overstating this, this is the end of the world. <laughs> so I, think I, said, I don't know why you think that's overstating it. So that's step two. Step three, the right starts writing think pieces. Is this conservative? Is it uh, leading up to, you know, is it using conservative principles? Is he betraying our principles and all this stuff? And the only reason I haven't participated in that, and I've explained this before, but it's worth saying again, it's not that I don't share those principles. It's not that some of the things Trump does uh, don't make me nervous. They do. But like, politics doesn't take place here but behind a microphone. It takes place in the arena. And in the arena, you compromise, you do things that you have to do to get enough popularity, enough political uh, weight to do the things that you want to do. Ronald Reagan did protectionist stuff. He put on like a 100% tariff on Japanese electronics, and he protected uh, auto workers and things like that, stuff that I would not recommend as policy. But it made him popular enough with Reagan Democrats that he had a lot of power. If Trump does things like this carrier deal, that I mean, the right has been writing about this carrier deal forever, and you just think, like, dude, it's like one thing that he did to get a little popularity going, to get some steam up. If he uses that popularity, if he uses that political weight to do conservative things, and we get step back and judge the whole administration, the administration as a whole, and the direction it's going, then we can start to say, yes, this is a good direction, or this is a bad direction. So that's step three. Step two, the left goes nuts. Step three, the right goes 
one. Step four, Trump then does something that makes you sick to your stomach. <laughs> this is the other thing. He keeps doing this stuff. You know, just as I'm saying, like, everybody calm down. Yesterday, what did he do? Some, some guy, carrier union guy, criticized him and he attacks him on Twitter. You know, if you're going to be the president of the United States, don't punch down, you know, don't be attacked. And, and everything is down. It's one thing to go after Saturday Night Live, to go after the left's cultural monopoly that they use, you know, with impunity against us all the time. That's one thing. But you just don't go attacking everybody. He also met with Leonardo DiCaprio on climate change. I mean, he was great in Titanic. He really was. But, like, I don't care what he thinks about climate change. So that's the, the, that's the four-step transition. This is happening every day. Good appointments. Left goes crazy. Right, right gets uh, over-concerned. And Donald Trump then does something that makes us nauseous. So, so that's going on. And if you want to you get a great idea of what effect this is having on people, Jimmy Kimmel, who has been hitting Trump, and he just says, oh, he's so extreme, all his appointments are extreme. He sent one of his people out to interview people on the street and ask them what he, they thought of Trump's appointments and pretending that Trump's appointments are supervillains from comics, okay, from the comics. So here's a, a, a cut of that. What do you think about Trump appointing Dr. Otto Octavius as head of the CDC? I do not agree with him. And do you think that he'll have all eight of his hands in the pockets of pharmaceutical companies? Yes, I do. How come? I believe that Trump would allow him to. He would give him that authority. What do you think about Trump appointing Edward Nygma for the Department of Education? Um, I actually th think that's a great idea for, for our election, yeah. Trump is trying to diversify the gender makeup of his cabinet. So do you think his appointment of Harley Quinn was a good choice given that she has volatile mental health issues? No. Is it a good choice to have her as Secretary of Health and Human Services? No, no. I, no, if she's got her own issues, I don't know that she'll make good decisions. Harvey Dent has an experience as a district attorney, but he's been accused of flip-flopping on key issues. Do you think, do you trust him or do you think he's a little bit two-faced to be Attorney General? I think he's a little bit two-faced to be Attorney General. Now, what, what they don't tell you is that the people they're interviewing uh, are all journalists for CNN. They don't. <laughs> you know, what bothers me about this is not only do these guys not know who's really getting appointed, they don't know who the supervillains are. The guy's yeah. asking him, <laughs> like, and he approved. I like the guy who said, yeah, the, the Riddler, good choice, you know. <laughs> so nobody is listening. Nobody is listening to this. I mean, why, you know, it's Christmas time. People are worried about, you know, buying presents for their families and getting together with their, you know, parents without killing them and all this stuff. And, and this is. Is, you know the news is the news media is just spewing out this panic and this verbiage that no one's paying attention to, and they realize they realize that they have lost their authority. They have lost their power to sway the people because we no longer care what they think, and to strike back, they they are. There is now a move afoot, and it is one of these. It is a really pernicious thing because it's widespread, and at the same time, it's it's quiet. This move to silence the right. They're going to do it. They're going to try and do it through algorithms that cut people out of search searches on uh, Google and things like this. And they're going to do it by defining hate speech as right wing speech. Anytime a right winger opens his mouth, they're going to be banned from social media. And the big thing that the press is selling this this fading media, this fading news media that sold its integrity and now has lost its, uh, you know, it, it's lost its power to sway people because it's lied to us for so long. The, the other thing they're doing is they're selling this fake news idea. This, oh, they must protect us. We must be protected from fake news. And they got a big boost last weekend when a guy walked into Comet Ping Pong in Washington, D.C. and let off a round from his shotgun because there has been this fake news story, this conspiracy story. Uh, Comet Ping Pong is a, a pizza parlor and a uh, concert venue in Washington, D.C. Very popular, very popular with the left. They were talking to Hillary Clinton, to John Podesta about a fundraising deal, and somehow this got spun out into this conspiracy theory where Hillary Clinton and John Podesta were selling children into sex slavery and satanic sex slavery underneath the pizza. There were tunnels underneath the pizza parlor and all this. Total baloney, absolute baloney. You know, and, and the kind of thing that Alex Jones picks up, that, you know, that guy, that guy, that's another thing Trump does that makes me a little nauseous when he gets in touch with Alex Jones. You know, this guy, this guy is a loon and they sell this stuff. And so one poor schmuck believes in this and goes in there with a rifle. He says he's going to investigate. He's going to investigate, and he lets off a gun. Uh, he lets off a gunshot. And 
the worst thing about this, the most dangerous thing about this, is one of the people spreading this false story was the son of Michael Flynn, the a guy who's going to be the uh, uh, national security advisor for Trump. And this guy, Michael Flynn Jr., was working with his father during the transition. He had to put in for security clearance, and they fired. They got rid of him. They said, we can't have this going on. This is a distraction, and they got rid of him. And we're going to talk about more about this, and we're going to have John Nolte on, one of the best observers of the media, and we'll talk to him more about this. After we say goodbye to our friends on Facebook and YouTube, come on over to the dailywire.com and subscribe, and you can watch the whole thing on the site and be part of the mailbag. We had a great mailbag yesterday, answered all your questions, improved your life. You can be part of that if you just subscribe. Come on over.